Thank you, Chair. Good morning, conference. I'm going to keep this motion short. This is the third year running for above inflation increases in dental charges for general dentistry, and the tipping point has now been reached. For many dentists, patient charges exceed payments for dental contracts, so that, in effect, we are tax collectors. This will only become worse in the next two years unless above inflation increases stop. All of us, I'm sure, have had enough of HMRC and don't really be wanting to act for them. In 2017, patients paid an additional £72.4 million in dental charges. How is this helping Theresa May's just managing workers? One in five patients are now delaying dental treatment due to the rising costs so that treatments are bottled up. And when patients present late, more extensive treatment is required and the UDA remuneration becomes insufficient. Following this, practitioners often fail to meet their UDA targets, resulting in clawbacks at the end of the year. This money then disappears into the NHS black hole. Please support this motion to make charges fair and reasonable for patients and dentists alike so that we can focus on patient care rather than collecting taxes. Why do we collect the tooth tax on behalf of the government? Why can't there be an alternative method for patients to pay the tooth tax? Even the CDO suggested alternatives in her royal, royal tour. Why, why do we have to spend unfunded time explaining the variation in benefits that patients can receive that will allow them to be either partially or totally exempt? Why do we have to put up with angry patients who have ticked the wrong box and been fined £100 and then come back to complain to us bitterly? Why have we allowed a scheme that was the key reason for the introduction of the two-month rule to continue for so long? Let's find a different way of collecting the dental tax which doesn't involve dentists. Are there any speakers to these motions? So we shall go to a vote. First of all, we'll vote on 29. This is an England only vote, so all those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? Passed with a majority, thank you. Uh, the vote on 29A was a UK vote, so all those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? That was carried with a majority, thank you. Patients in difficult circumstances are entitled to free NHS care when they're seen both in the GDS and the CDS. At the commencement of each and every single course of NHS treatment, dentists are required to have the patient sign a PR form. This form asks not just whether the patient is entitled to free treatment, but also the exact benefit their exemption status is based on. Incorrect claims uh, for free NHS uh, treatment result in a penalty charge of £100 plus the cost of treatment plus a potential £50 surcharge for late payment. This system is designed to prevent benefit fraud, but it ends up unfairly penalising thousands of the most vulnerable patients who are rightfully entitled to free dental care but end up ticking the wrong box. The current situation is so confusing and difficult to navigate that many patients and carers accessing dental services struggle to fill in the form and end up being fined for making an honest mistake in their declarations. This is borne out um, in a freedom of information uh, uh, requirement.
request from the BDA that showed that the number of fines issued to patients claiming an exemption for NHS dental charges has grown drastically in the last 10 years, from around about £2,000 in 2007 to over £365,000 in 2016-17. However, nine out of 10 of these fines issued between 2014 and 2016 were then overturned. This bureaucracy um, causes significant and unnecessary distress to thousands of vulnerable people. And it also constitutes a significant barrier to their care. If an individual in a care home is fined, then that effect can deter carers from bringing the other residents, while the burden of having the PR form signed puts another pressure on dentist practices and service providers. People are living longer and keeping their teeth longer the number of people with dementia is set to rise to over a million in 2025. If steps aren't taken now, the problem will only get worse. I urge the conference to show support to the BDA's ECDS committee campaign to stop these unfair fines and make the exemption declar declaration system easier to navigate for all patients, especially the vulnerable and those with special needs who are not able to make their own financial declarations. Thank you. One, Richard, to get through these motions, yeah, that's better. So Richard Grant is going to speak for the motion with Chair's permission. Yes, conference. Um, it's an interesting concept, but it would seem to me that if we want to uh, make public relations a lot better with the government and with patients, then perhaps instead of sending out a fine letter in the first instance, that the department writes to the patient and says, we think you're not entitled to this. Can you please verify A, B, C, D? And then see what happens. Give them a chance to correct their error. Thank you, Richard. Number th 30, is it? Right, Paul McCrory is going to speak for motion 30. Uh, yes, not only is the question of them ticking the wrong box being, being entitled, but it's also, uh, per, I'm not entirely sure whether it was intended to be clear in this point that I, I'm going to make, and my apologies if it is already, but it's the qualifications which attach to each of the um, uh, exemptions, for instance, income support, um, the disability living allowance uh, doesn't count. Um, whenever I went through the, uh, these questions on a, a very brief poll on GDP UK, um, it, the, the numbers of dentists who were reporting that patients were having difficulty in understanding these sub-clauses well, ranged between 80 and 90% for every single one of them. Uh, those are income support, income-based job seekers allowance, income-related employment support allowance, Income, uh, and um, pension credit, guarantee credit. So the, these qualifications which come at the bottom are causing real confusion. And only on Monday of this week, I had two patients who went away and would have ended up potentially being fined as a consequence of not uh, ringing up and checking. And this also causes a loss of time and practice because if you're trying to protect patients who are particularly vulnerable and perhaps um, uh, have, uh, have uh, dyslexia or whatever, or don't understand the benefits they're receiving, then you're going to lose time as well by trying to do the right thing by them. So I think that there needs to be some sort of statement that attaches to benefits, whether you're entitled to free treatment or not, period, uh, for dentistry. And, and, and they sh ideally, they would be issued with a card. And when they're, if they're issued with a card, it should have a start date, it should have a finish date, because a lot of the um, documents that are brought in, they have a start date, but they do not have a finish date. Uh, and I, I think that there needs to be an awful lot more clarification in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next to speak is Russell Gidney from Gwent. Gwent. I'm not sure if he's speaking for or against. I'm speaking for the motion. Again, just briefly again to say that Wales are obviously included in this because we have exactly the same principle. 
Um, there was um, something, I believe it was probably the Daily Mail, don't quote me on the newspaper, that had this article running recently. Uh, and if anyone looked through then the comments going below, um, this whole issue gives a lot of bad press to the dental um, profession. All the comments going through below were well, why were dentists being allowed to charge by the government for the dental treatment? Why were we being allowed to do this when, when NHS service is free? The fact that we are being obviously made to make the charges and then they're getting the fines is it giving added, free, uh, added bad press to us. So I would strongly support this motion. We're getting a lot of flack for something that isn't actually any issue to do with us at all and, and I think it needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. As we're, as we're coming towards the end of the thing, can, can we just make the comments to the motions, you know, maybe about a minute? So we've got Hanif uh, Mori coming from Leicester speaking for the motion. Moti, sorry. Okay, I, I actually speak for the motion. However, I think we shouldn't just give them an open statement, be they say to find a solution. I think we should suggest, suggest a solution. And perhaps, you know, get these patients to carry like a health passport with them, which actually says they're exempt, which makes our life a lot more easier rather than being a DHSS office trying to figure out if they are exempt or not exempt, which I find in practice every day, trying to ask them, are you exempt and what is your exemption? I do it in my surgery. I don't do it at reception because there's no privacy there. So I think, you know, if they carry something very simple, which says they can have free dental treatment at the point of access, then that will be much easier for us. So rather than saying, Let's ask them to find a solution. Let's suggest one. No more speakers to motion 30. Um, so this is an England only vote. So all those in favor. And Wales, okay. I'm easily turned. All those against. Any abstentions? That's carried unanimously. Thank you.